Hello, and welcome to Ask a Marian. My name is Father Tyler, here with the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Today's question is a question that we get asked a lot, especially as Marian Fathers. And the question is, why Marian Consecration? Why do we have to go to Mary? Why can't we just go directly to Christ, directly to Jesus? Why Marian Consecration? Well, that's a great question. And I want to answer that question today with three basic points. The first point is, God has a mom. Second, God gives his mom to us. And third, we give ourselves to our mom. So first, God has a mom. If we look at the Lord Jesus and his life, we know that God chose to come to humankind, to humanity, to set us free from our sins and to bring us eternal life. But how did God do that? What was that divinely chosen way that God selected of all the ways he could have selected? What was that sacred road, that spotless and immaculate path upon which God came to us to set us free? Well, that sacred road has a name, and her name is Mary. See, Jesus came through Mary to bring us salvation. And so the Lord's inviting us, after his example, to go through Mary back to God. We also know that Mary, in a very special way, was a a dear companion of Christ during all of his life. We look at the life of Christ and we know that he lived on this earth for 33 years. Three years of those were spent in his public ministry, you know, preaching and teaching, gathering his disciples and apostles, healing the blind, raising the dead to life, and walking on the water, among many other miracles. But where was Jesus for the other 30 years of his life? He was at home with Mary. He was spending that time learning from Mary, allowing Mary to mother him in virtues, teaching him how to love, how to live, how to pray, how to learn the scriptures, how to be a good and faithful child of the Heavenly Father. Thirty years at home Jesus spent with Mary and Joseph in their home. And so this is very important. God himself, the second person of the Trinity in the person of Christ, spent three years in his public ministry, but 30 years at home. In other words, he spent 10 times as much time at home as he did in his public ministry. 10 times longer at home with Mary. Wow, what a powerful point the Lord is driving home to us of how important it is to allow Mary to dwell with us in our home and everything that makes up our life to mother us into Christ. And that brings us to our second point. God gives his mom to us. We go to the cross and we see Jesus there nailed to the cross in his final moments on this earth, suffering for love of us to set us free. Now, Jesus is in his final moments. It's, he's literally in his last breaths, his dying, dying breaths. Now, whenever somebody dies, we know that their last request Their deathbed wish, so to speak, is very important, and we're called to cherish that and honor that request. Well, how much more so important is that with Christ, with God himself? And what is his final will and testament? Well, with his dying breath on the cross, he looks down and he sees Mary, his mother, and he says to her, Woman, behold your son. And then he looks at John, the beloved disciple, and he says, Behold your mother. Those very important lines reveal to us that Jesus wants Mary to be the mother of all believers through all generations. Everyone who comes to be born again in the Spirit of God, to be born again in faith in Christ, is to have Mary as their mother. And also, in the person of the beloved disciple John, it's not only for John, but through all believers, throughout all times and all generations, they are to let Mary mother Christ in them, just as John did in his life. 
The very next line is very important in that gospel passage just after the lines I mentioned already. And it says, from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. St. Pope John Paul II, a great lover of the Blessed Virgin Mary, interprets it this way. In other words, John took Mary into everything that makes up his interior life. Everything that makes up his spiritual life, his life with God, he invited Mary in, to his home, to his heart. And so Mary's motherhood is expansive, all believers in Christ, and she has a personal love for each one of us. Yes, she's the mother of all, but also the mother of each person individually. Because like any good mother, yes, they may have many children, but they love each child with a personal love. And so much more so with Mary, who is full of grace and without sin. She knows us with a personal affection, a personal love. And she mothers Christ in us in the way that she knows is best suited to each of our needs. And so this brings us to our third point. We give ourselves to our mom. We know that we see in the example of Jesus that he took her into his own home and lived with her for those 30 years. And we also see the example of John, who from the foot of the cross received the request of Christ and, and welcomed Mary into his own home and had a unique and powerful intimacy with, with Christ in and through and because of Mary. And now it's your turn. What's a powerful, most beautiful and short, perfect and in a certain way, simple and easy way to grow in this intimacy with Christ, to have this new revival and kickstart of a, a walk with Christ in our lives. It's Marian consecration. Now, Marian consecration, put very simply, is a way of perfectly imitating Christ who came to us in and through Mary. And so in perfect imitation of our Lord, we go in and through Mary to go back to Christ and to God. Because just as the Lord abandoned himself totally to her, his past, his present, his future, his earthly goods, his spiritual goods, in short, everything that he is and everything that he has, he says, Mary, I give all to you. And he invites us to do the same. Behold your mother. He invites us to do the same, to lay everything at Mary's feet and say, Mary, I am yours. Form me into that saint that God is calling me to be. Mother me into the full maturity of Christ. Some simple resources for this are a book entitled 33 Days to Morning Glory by our own Father Michael Gately. There's also other resources out there for Marian consecration as well, but it's basically a period of 33 days of walking with Mary. We can think of it as one day for each year in the life of Jesus that he spent with Mary. And we pray, we ponder, we reflect, we get to know Mary, and we gradually welcome her into our lives and in our hearts. And at the end of that 33-day period, on a Marian feast day, customarily, we entrust everything to her, just like Christ did. And so, through the intercession of Mary's immaculate heart, may Almighty God abundantly bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.